Okay, uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank the organizer for inviting me to this brilliant conference. Um, and uh, mm, uh, this is, oh, where is the, Mm -hmm. Does it work? No. How does it? This one. This one? Where is it? Ah, I see. Uh, so, um, uh, what I'm going to speak about is this uh, Bose-Einstein condensation. I, I, I don't almost see it. Uh, in uh, of the magnets in yttrium iron garnet, um, and. Uh, this is work which I made together with my former student, Pushan Lee, now postdoc at Los Alamos, and another student, Chen San, and my friends and co-workers, uh, Dr. Swain Seslo from Texas and m University, and Dr. Thomas Natterman from uh, Cologne, uh, University of Cologne. And uh, my thanks are to Sergei Demokrito, who was the main person in the experiment here. Um, Okay. Um, oh, sorry. I need, I need previous one. So the, uh, th that is my congratulations to uh, to Boris. And uh, on this um, on this photo, you you see that on this picture, you see that um, Boris exerts some um, as. It, attracting force to other people. They lean to him. Um, I'm one of multitude of people who experience this uh, attraction, and I'm happy that uh, our, um, our world lines crossed at some point, and I have a privilege and pleasure of, of communicating with him. Thank you. And many happy returns of, of your birthday. <clears throat> so what is, this is brief outline what I'm going to speak about. First, I will uh, give a very brief introduction what is, uh, uh, is uh, yttrium iron garnet and uh, what is spectrum of magnets in it. Uh, then I will describe the experiment um, produced um, to, on condensation of magnets in yttrium iron garnet, uh, because without that it, it will be uh, non understandable what, what, what will be later. <clears throat> uh, the third point is a theory of, uh, for this experiment and uh, um, uh, then uh, I, I will speak about a uh, new, uh, not yet published material, superfluidity of magnets. Only theory, no experiment so far. Uh, experiment is in progress now. And uh, yeah, conclusions probably, I, I hope that uh, there will be time to read them. <clears throat> okay, this is uh, yttrium iron uh, garnet. It is. Uh, uh, very good. what we don't what we need to know about uh, it is that uh, it is I don't understand. Do you see something? No, I don't. Ah, oh, uh, this is a very very good crystal, uh, a very good insulator, um, and therefore spin waves in it um, are surprisingly. Uh, have surprisingly small uh, line widths, and this is the uh, 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 best toy for experimenters in, in magnetism. They produce uh, spin waves in it and transfer uh, and uh, made some uh, inter interesting applications to, to that. To that. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, but I do not have time to speak about uh, technical applications of that. Uh, now, um, it is sufficiently um, complicated. Uh, it has sufficiently complicated unit, uh, unit cell with 80 atoms in it, and 20 of them are irons. Uh, it is ferrite, 
uh, with sufficiently high uh, critical tem Curie temperature and with uh, big spin per unit cell. It's about 15. Uh, now, the experiments uh, on condensation were produced not in the bulk crystal but in the film. Uh, and the film, has, uh, film was not very thin. Uh, um, uh, it was about uh, one to five uh, microns six, so it looks like it is a uh, um, three-dimensional situation, but in reality it is not completely so because um, just at, at this thickness the uh, dipolar forces play the same role as exchange forces. And uh, therefore, especially at, at very low, at very low energy, and therefore, um, uh, the, the polar force uh, should be uh, taken in account very seriously. So the Hamiltonian includes not only exchange interaction but also the polar force uh, and uh, Zeeman interaction, <clears throat> because S is big. Uh, Holstein Primakov transformation works well, and uh, all the calculations can be made explicitly, at least uh, for the lowest uh, energy band in which the uh, spin uh, of um, spin of of a, of a cell rotates as a whole. Okay, uh, therefore. Uh, these calculations were produced uh, many years ago already, and uh, the spectrum was calculated. Uh, the, initial, the initial quadratic Hamiltonian uh, contains um, not only uh, a standard term in which number of, of, of magnets or number of spin uh, uh, of spin um, flips is conserved, but also uh, uh, non-conserving numbers uh, of spin flips here, so non-conserving magnetization. And, uh, and that is due, these two terms are due to, uh, to dipolar interaction, surely. <clears throat> uh, okay. Uh, 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 all this... Uh, what enters the Hamiltonian and what enters the, uh, the spectrum of magnets is written here. Uh, and as a result, we have, uh, in contrast to, uh, to the, um, in contrast to the bulk spectrum, we have a spectrum which has two minima, uh, a finite wave vector Q, uh, Q and minus Q, and uh, maximum in the center, uh, maximum at Q equal to zero. This Q is determined by dipolar interaction, also by uh, exchange interaction. D is something like exchange uh, constant multiplied by, a, by uh, lattice constant, by volume of elementary cell. Uh, and uh, this is a thickness of of, um, of the film. So uh, mm, this is sufficiently complicated combination. But uh, in total, the uh, it it has a value in the range of ten to five um, um, inverse centimeters. <clears throat> uh, now, an important remark is that. Uh, uh, AK is uh, operator uh, initially uh, associated with the uh, change of spin by one. Uh, therefore, the operators of, uh, of magnets, uh, which are linear combination of, operator, of operators A uh, and A dagger, uh, in general, uh, do not have diff uh, definite spin. But fortunately, just near the minima where condensate is formed, 
uh, u is very close to one and v is very close to zero. Therefore, uh, uh, condensate magnets have um, definite spin equal to one. Um. Uh, now, uh, next um, uh, approximation in the Goldstone uh, expansion gives us the interaction of magnets, and there are uh, three, three different types of important direction. One is uh, the vertex uh, with three lines, which corresponds in principle to uh, decay uh, of one magnets in two magnets. Uh, which is uh, um, which may be uh, forbidden if uh, if the frequency is less than the uh, double Zeeman gap in spectrum. Mm. Now, uh, next is uh, mm, the scattering process: two, two in two. They do not conserve energy and momentum of each, but uh, uh, they conserve the number of spin rates of, of magnets. <clears throat> and finally, uh, one to three, uh, this, this to uh, this and this uh, interactions are due to dipolar uh, interaction, which does not conserve the number of magnets. And uh, uh, this is forbidden if omega bigger than three delta. Uh, nevertheless, it is very important for condensate because it contributes a uh, very unusual term to the uh, self-consistent field. <clears throat> now, uh, I will describe the experiment. Uh, in 2006, uh, the, the German group of experimenters in Münster uh, under the um, um, supervision of, um, uh, of uh, Sergei Demokritov had discovered uh, the phenomenon of Bose condensation of magnets in yttrium iron garment under the pumping. And what is also very important that this Bose condensation happened at room temperature. <clears throat> So uh, what is the uh, basic experiment? They had a film, uh, they had a film of yttrium iron garment. Uh, uh, the magnetization and magnetic field were directed parallel, and they pumped magnets by a microstrip resonator under the film uh, directly to um, uh, yttrium iron garnet um, uh, because the electromagnetic field has momentum practically equal to zero. Uh, the only process which was possible or the most probable process which is possible uh, was the uh, decay of photon uh, of electromagnetic field in two, two magnets with opposite uh, momenta and with equal energy therefore uh, the energy of magnets was twice less than energy of photon. Okay. <clears throat> now, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the magnetic field was uh, chosen in such a way, it is not a unique way, but the, uh, you, you should uh, satisfy this equation, this uh, condition that uh, uh, this appearance magnets uh, should have frequency smaller than doubled, uh, doubled Zeeman gap, okay? Then the decay is f forbidden, and the number of, ma of these magnets is um, uh, approximately conserved. Now, uh, what they did after that, they um, um, considered they observed how the, uh, this appear, appear in magnets relax and form some equilibrium with condensate in the end. Uh, for that, they had 
they applied the brilliant light scatter. They had a laser focused in some point of film. Uh, and the same lens collected the scattered uh, light into some um, uh, interferometer or, or filter which uh, analyzed um, distribution of the uh, of this um, in, um, distribution of this magnets by frequency. So that is what they observe uh, in the in the uh, left upper picture. Uh, again, it disappears. In the left upper picture, you see the uh, equilibrium distribution before they applied pumping. Uh, it is cut off because their filter had a limited um, band, uh, so it could not analyze a lot further. Now, what happens after pumping, you see that the peak becomes more and more narrow, and in the end, after 500 nanosecond, uh, the peak was so um, narrow that uh, they could not resol resolve it. <clears throat> um, okay, uh, this is this, the same uh, process, but uh, with angular analysis. Uh, and uh, you see here that initially they had a, a spot of uh, appearing magnets, uh, then uh, it becomes broadened in, in some range. Uh, the the burden increased, but after some time uh, it decreased, and at 700 nanoseconds it, it became very narrow near minimum. This point corresponds to minimum of energy in momentum space. So what is going on? Uh, I will present some s simple theoretical ideas. Uh, and the first, uh, they are by, based on, on approximate conservation of uh, spin waves. Partly it was done by Bunkov and Volovic. Uh, when they, 20 years ago, they considered uh, such a phenomenon in helium-3. Uh, so uh, the first uh, important statement is that uh, the, pump, the pumping establishes a stationary number uh, of spin waves uh, of, of magnets, uh, pump magnets, which is determined by, uh, by the uh, pumping power and, life, and, and the magnets' lifetime. Uh, so this is uh, the pumped energy. Uh, and it is divided by energy of magnum, of pumped magnum, that gives this stationary number. <clears throat> now, um, um, uh, then low energy spin waves relax to a metastable thermal equilibrium, but because they are conserved, uh, uh, this equilibrium uh, will be with a non-zero chemical potential. Before of that, the equilibrium was with zero chemical potential because high energy magnets do not conserve their number. So the, uh, um, they were able to, uh, to, to um, confirm, experimenters were able to confirm that uh, uh, what they observe is uh, uh, the uh, Bose-Einstein distribution, which can be uh, substituted by uh, Rayleigh-Jones distribution because uh, the interest in energy are very small in comparison to temperature. Temperature 300 uh, Kelvin, the energy of magnum, uh, condensate magnum, is less than one. Kelvin, <clears throat> approximate low point one. So uh, if you would have this uh, distribution everywhere, 
the, the total number of magnets will, will, would depend on temperature and chemical potential. Uh, initial distribution is uh, uh, the same, but with chemical potential equal to zero, and the uh, difference between number of magnets with chemical potential and without chemical potential is just this fixed number of pump magnets. Uh, and uh, mm, you see here that it depends on chemical potential. And, uh, and this sum is uh, converging even in three dimensions. Uh, therefore, uh, uh, all these magnets are concentrated in low energy pump magnets, co concentrated in low energy region. Uh, now, this is equation for chemical potential as function of pump of number of pump magnets. You see here that uh, the chemical potential grows like, uh, as function of uh, uh, number of pump magnets, but it cannot overcome the gap in the spectrum because uh, like in, 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 uh, in the uh, standard Bose condensation, but uh, 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 in, the, in this case, the gap was zero, so chemical potential could not be uh, more than zero. In, in, but here it cannot be more than gap in the spectrum. And when it reaches the gap in the spectrum, uh, this is just the uh, signature of, um, of uh, Bose condensation. So uh, the critical value the critical value of uh, number of, mag of pump magnets is just the difference between, uh, uh, so this, um, this value uh, with mu substituted by delta. <clears throat> if the number of pump magnets, if you if we increase, uh, uh, increase the power of pumping and number of pump magnets uh, exceeds the critical value, then the difference between uh, number of pump magnets and critical uh, number of pump magnets uh, fall into the condensate. Okay, this is an, so you see here that the total number of particles in condensate also is um, um, completely defined by uh, pumping power. Uh, now, um, it explains why con condensation is possible at, at room temperature. This is because the condensed particles all have the energy of the order of delta, and delta is very small. <clears throat> OK. Uh, six years later, the same um, uh, experimental team uh, made another very important experiment. Uh, uh, namely, they uh, improved um, the uh, mm, the lens so that the spot of laser beam became uh, less than wavelengths of uh, condensate magnets. And uh, after that, uh, mm, scanning the, uh, the, mm, the laser, they could uh, find how the density of condensate magnets depends on coordinate. This is this uh, lower picture. And you see very uh, well, um, uh, very well seen uh, interference structure. This interference is just uh, the interference from uh, of two, of two different condensate in the point Q and point minus Q. Uh, what was surprising in their uh, experiment is 
um, that the contrast of this in interference picture was very low, namely 3%. And uh, I will explain next why it is so surprising. Uh, uh, what brilliant scattering sees it is local delta mz associated with uh, magnets. And if we consider only condensate, then delta mz uh, uh, associated with condensate um, contains of, uh, consists of, uh, is a square, square of modulus of wave function of condensate, which consists of two, uh, of, of um, superposition of two terms from condensate in point Q and point minus Q. Uh, uh, the, the square of CQ is a number of, of magnets in the point Q, and this number of magnets in point minus Q, and there is an interference term with wave vector to Q. Uh, the fact that it is, uh, the wave vector is really 2Q was uh, confirmed by experiment very well. But, uh, uh, if we would have nq equal to n minus q, the contrast would be 100%. So that mean, minimum is zero, maximum is something, yeah? But they had instead uh, 3%. It can happen if uh, one of two condensate, uh, of two condensate is much smaller than another, yeah? If n minus q, for example, is much less than nq, then this term is much smaller than that. And we have almost constant. In particular, when n minus q is equal to zero, there is no condensate, no interference at all. So the question is why the symmetry q to minus q is violated. That is the first problem which should be solved. Uh, and that was solved in the, uh, um, in the work we, which we published in the year 2013. Um, uh, and the idea was the following, that the, regis, the distribution of condensate, of particles between two condensate uh, is only due to interaction. Uh, because the energy in these two points is the same. So redistribution, uh, without interaction would not change energy. So we can calculate the force, the force uh, order constant, uh, energy interaction between, between magnets, and there are two constant characterizing this interaction. The constant A uh, in, is uh, interaction between magnets in one condensate. Okay, two magnets in one condensate. The B is the interaction between two magnets in different condensate. And we have found that A is negative, B is positive uh, for, for, the, for their conditions. Uh, if so, that means that magnets in the same condensate attract each other, Mag magnets in different condensate repulse each other. Therefore, the ground state should be all magnets in one condensate Another is empty, okay? Uh, but then, if it is so, there is no, uh, no interference picture. So why interference appears? Okay, uh, so let me write the most, uh, it's almost most general um, uh, equation for uh, terms of uh, force order. Uh, A and, and B are what we had before, but there is also due to dipolar interaction, there is a term which is, uh, contains one uh, creation operator and three, uh, and three annihilation operators. Uh, you can uh, take uh, the Mm, wave vectors in such a way that sum of all these wave vectors equal to zero. 
uh, take into account that you should. Okay. Uh, what is the importance of this uh, dipolar uh, induced interaction is that it depends on the phase of the wave uh, of the condensate. If you write that condensate is uh, square root of uh, number of particles times exponent of i phi, then the first two terms do not depend on this phi. But the third depends, and uh, it, uh, in the ends we get cosine of some phase, and this phase is sum of these two phi, in the phi in the point Q plus phi in the point minus Q. Now you see that the minimum of energy definitely appears in the point when cosine phi is equal to plus one or minus one. Okay, cosine phi uh, if, if C is a real number, uh, but you can uh, keep it real. Um, so th that means that in principle, uh, uh, first of all, we have a phase coherence, trapped phase between these two condensate. And secondly, uh, what is also very important that there are two different states, pi state and zero state, in principle. <clears throat> okay, now imagine that we already made this uh, minimization over phi, uh, and then uh, what remains is the function of, uh, of um, number of particles, n q and n minus q. Uh, we should minimize this um, um, function under constraint that the total number of particles in condensate is constant. So what we should minimize, uh, what variable sh should be uh, varied is only difference between number of particles in condensate and um, q and minus q. Uh, that can be made very easily because it is very simple. And uh, the result is that uh, the ground state depends on the criterion which is I minus B plus C. And if it is positive, then the symmetric phase wins in which NQ is equal to N minus Q. If it is negative, then uh, non-symmetric phase wins. Um, and uh, uh, delta is not equal to zero in this case. <clears throat> uh, now, uh, um, after that, we, we calculated um, the phase diagram in the um, two variables. Uh, one is uh, magnetic field, another one is magnetic field over uh, Okay, this is magnetic field, this is thickness. Here are only small thicknesses, but uh, big thickness, in big thickness, uh, practically um, only non-symmetric phase with phi equal to zero wins. So uh, that is what, what now is available for experiment. But if we will, will have a thinner film uh, in, in the range of uh, between 10 and 20, uh, then we will have, first of all, non-symmetric phase, but with phi equal to pi, and secondly, symmetric phase with phi equal to pi. How much time do I have? Okay. <clears throat> Not too much. <clears throat> uh, now I will show, uh, so now after that I will show, I will uh, should write the magnetization also in this form, uh, uh, taking in account phases. And these phases also enter the uh, interference pattern, but not some, but difference. And this difference is a free parameter which simply shifts uh, the interference picture as a whole. Therefore, definitely doesn't change energy. It is Goldstone variable. Um, 
Okay, this is contrast. As, uh, you please uh, note that it depends on model C. And uh, in the experiments, uh, uh, A, B, and C were like that. Uh, that gives for, for a, according to this formula, for beta, it gives uh, beta equal from 2.5 to 5%. When experiment, it was from 3 to 10. And um, uh, the theoretical um, reason for beta to be small is because QD is big parameter. Uh, in their experiment, it was even not 30, but about 40. Um, okay, uh, let me miss all, all that and that. Sorry, but uh, I do not have time for that. Um, uh, but your slides are available is, uh, from the program, so people can see. Hmm? Your slides are uploaded, so yeah. people can. This is called stone mode. Uh, we calculated it. Uh, uh, we have uh, sound like dispersion, which becomes quadratic. Uh, a big Q, um, um, and uh, interesting that this uh, velocity of sound is about a kilometer per second uh, for, for um, uh, non-symmetric case, but for symmetric case, it is about 10 times less. Now about superfluidity of magnet gas. There are two different obstacles to superfluidity. Uh, the gas is, the magnet gas, the condensate is, um, uh, is um, coherent, therefore seems reasonable to expect superfluidity, but there are two obstacles. First of all, that the uh, normal phase overwhelming, uh, ex overwhelmingly exceeds the uh, superfluid phase by the number of magnets. Because uh, all superfluidity is in the range about 0.1 Kelvin, while we are at 300 Kelvin. So uh, the, 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 the ratio of numbers is about 100. Uh, uh, but what we discovered when we um, um, analyzed critical uh, velocity and uh, velocity in uh, applied gradient of magnetic field uh, that the uh, velocities um, of velocities of um, normal part by uh, which are diffusion in the force uh, due to very small uh, due to very small uh, mean free pass uh, is about five to to seven orders of magnitude less than the velocity of superfluid part. And therefore, the current it will be mainly in superfluid, not in normal part. Now, that gives us an opportunity to consider superfluid part separately. But then we have a main obstacle. Main obstacle is that no number of particles in superfluid part is not concerned. So instead of normal, uh, instead of usual uh, continuity equation, we have continuity equation with uh, right part proportional to sinus of angle, phi. Uh, uh, this n bar is um, the difference um, of uh, nq and n minus q. And it is conserved because it is Goldstone mode. Uh, now, the coefficient eta is very important here because it determines the energy barrier for uh, which you can overcome and then the motion becomes superfluid, but not usual superfluid motion. Uh, and this n is cn square over a divided by h, and you see here for Deep, a little bit different for symmetric and non-symmetric case. <clears throat> now, what is new in comparison to standard superfluidity? Uh, first of all, 
to get superfluidity, you should overcome this barrier. So you, you should submit the energy to your condensate, which overcomes some barrier energy, which I have written before. <clears throat> uh, threshold energy. Now, imagine that energy, submitted energy, is only slightly bigger than threshold energy. Then what we should expect? If energy is small, we know that the phase is pinned to zero or pi. Now, if, if we have only small uh, energy or only light slightly exceeding the barrier, we should expect that it will be pinned almost everywhere and changed by 2 pi uh, uh, on, on some solitons of phase change. <clears throat> like that. So the phase is, on long intervals, is almost constant, then changes by 2 pi, then uh, in, uh, uh, again, the constant uh, 2 pi times integer, then again changes by 2 pi, and so on. So the change of phases, and therefore the velocity uh, concentrated not only in condensate. So velocity is not constant everywhere. So why it can how it can happen? Uh, the, uh, it can happen because the um, a dipolar interaction transfers the magnetization to lattice and then back. Why back? That is because the real processes are forbidden. <laughs> Therefore, you, you can get only that. <clears throat> uh, uh, this is uh, this is the, this formula shows how velocity depends on. Uh, on the length, on the period of this, quasi-period of this uh, picture. And uh, 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 you see here that the, the, ener the, the energy is associated with uh, this period uh, and energy of individual soliton. They have different dimensionalities. And, and that is, I repeated this formula for. Um, and finally, uh, I have shown the formula for domain wall width and domain wall energy. And these are conclusions, so please read them. <laughs> Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. <laughs>